It's, you're right. It, the, the idea behind having just one person try to answer all the different types of questions, even for Alex Mendez and myself, uh, while we're watching these games happen, I mean, I'm trying to digest every single bit of information that's on the screen. I'm trying to even speculate as much as possible. But, uh, you know, the many is better than the few in this type of scenario where you have millions of people watching. Yeah. We've, we've seen the yeah, uh, viewers that are out there, there too. So. Yeah. No, no, I think it's, uh, you know, the Battlefield has always been a game with great depth. Uh, so it's really hard for people to to grasp it in the first couple of minutes. You can see the core, you understand the world, you understand what it's supposed to do, and then you can explore that world and, and find you know, depth in almost every area of the game. You know, if you're a pilot, you can find depth. If, you're, if you like to play as a recon, there's infinite depth. There's so many things to do for each and individual class and individual uh, focus area for, for the players. And I think that's the, one of the biggest strengths with Battlefield, that you can actually honestly use your personality to, to conquer the battlefield. And I think that's amazing. I think one of the other beautiful aspects is the uh, the squad side of things too, whenever you yeah. sit there. Uh, I've watched numerous types of games. I've been at uh, the casual level, at a very high competitive level, watching a bunch of different games. And the communication, both casual and competitive, yeah. are above and beyond any other games that I've watched. I mean, yeah. the fact that it's so educated and saying exactly where they're watching, what they're doing, how much ammo they have, the, the support behind each other is just great. The fact that you'll see variations in classes, you'll see a recon support, uh, even have an engineer and assault all coming together and working together to get uh, one type of goal. And that's just one of the beautiful things. Right here you can see some pop shots uh, down range here by Alpha 5. Yeah, I think the... the the, the cool thing is that people want to work together, you know, they see the benefit exactly. of working together, they get they get a lot of, oh, what happened? I, th I think he <laughs> finally killed him off yeah. there as he came in. Uh, so people f find it very natural to, to work together, and you can see that that actually deepens the, the game for everyone on the map. It's not only a game about you, it's a game about you and your team winning together, and that creates a very, very uh, holistic, uh, feeling uh, where you you want your team to win rather than you want to just you know shoot people personally. Right. And so some of the other aspects that we that we've seen, of course, um, before we uh, just like in Battlefield 3, you had the ability to set down a motion sensor yep. uh, and in your recon class. But also I've noticed uh, that you have some uh, motion balls that you can actually uh, throw yes. uh, your motion sensor out there yes. as well. So that's, that's part of the mobility focus that we've, we've had. I think they've done a great job with, the, with all of those features where uh, you feel more mobile, you can you know, throw things like med packs, uh, motion sensors, etc. Right. Um, which feels, make, empowers the players uh, to, to get more intel about the, about the enemies and the surrounding world. Uh, but also then having the ability for the commander to you know, scan the whole area for a certain amount of time. Uh, gives go, gives the whole team a benefit uh, of this. And I think the uh, the cool thing here is that it works on a small and a big scale together. So it's not different games. It's actually the same game, right. and everyone is playing together. I think it's one of the great things too. Is that we're talking about uh, multi-tier levels. Uh, I'm on the base tier. So for instance, here on Siege of Shanghai, I may be in the residential area. But yeah. I can toss up. Um, a, a small medic pack up to the second floor to my teammates yes. when they need it most. They may be under gunfire from two different individuals. While I'm having to rush or back around to be able to get uh, get on the flank, I can at least give them some type of uh, mm -hmm. small med pack to be able to help yeah. them out through that process. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's interesting to see when you give people the ability to help each other, they will actually start doing that. Uh, and I think that's a very, very powerful uh, theme um, where people actually want to help. Uh, that's that's not something you see in every shooter today. Is there any other la last little things that you want to kind of note that, that that we really haven't dived down deep into? I think I think you we've uh, touched upon some really really cool things. That's a nice shot. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but it, it's interesting to see you know, that that the game at its core works really well, and I'm I'm loving the fact that people when they watch the live stream that they pick up on all the nuances right. that we changed with the game. Things that you might not be able to sell the first time you see the game, but when when you see it running live like this, you actually see all the small things that we change as well. So you get the full range of, of improvements for 
Battlefield 4 compared to Battlefield 3, for instance. Right. Uh, because to us, that's very important that you don't only have these big things that you, know, you could argue is like, oh, I don't care about those things. Uh, the the hundreds hours uh, that I'm spending in the right. game, uh, so I want you want depth in in all of the different small areas. Yeah, so it's been it's been good. I mean, so what what we've seen uh, throughout. I mean, you're ex exactly right on the fact that we when we listen, uh, have the chance to actually listen to the community and get their input of what they see. Uh, it's 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 just been great. I mean, it also along the same times whenever you have some type of uh, speculation out there, then. It allows more of a, maybe that might be a good feature to add into the game. Maybe we might. I, I, I definitely yeah. know that DICE listens to every Absolutely. aspect. And I appreciate you hopping on here with me. Uh, we'll get uh, allow you to kind of relax for a moment in between all of your all of your interviews that yes. you've had so far. <laughs> a pleasure having you on here, Patrick. Thank you very uh, we'll much. We'll get Thanks uh, Alex back on here in just a moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, again, we'll just continue to watch more gameplay. So stick around. Uh, here watching the Battlefield 4 live stream. So now I'm joined back here with Alex Mendez. Again, I was uh, talking with Patrick Bach there, and uh, you know, getting some really just high-level uh, detail of what's happened uh, throughout uh, Battlefield with, we've, with the new additions that we've seen in the game so far. Just kind of t really clarifying uh, some of the things that uh, people have been questioning. Yeah, Patrick is a great guy, uh, without a doubt. He is super, uh, super passionate about Battlefield and. You know, I mean, for new reason, but uh, but yeah, yeah. You know, I was on social media just a little while ago, uh, checking out what people were saying, and you know, they want to see some. They want to see some more focus on the uh, on the tickets. They want us. They want us to get into the nitty gritty of details of the ticket system. And you know, there could be some people who are fans of other games uh, that are watching this live stream because it is E3 2013, and this is the biggest video game convention. You know, uh, I guess Corey, why don't you tell people about the ticket system? In uh, in Battlefield Four, yeah. So I mean, what, the way that uh, the way that I've always understood it is, uh, you, you've got your different capture points, and so right now, as you can see, uh, you've got uh, three ticket points or three points that are held by the U.S. side and two by the Chinese. So by, with that type of uh, means that there's one a uh, one point difference at that at the, as you look at it, and so as time progresses, you're going to lose one ticket at a time. Um, some of the other things to note whenever uh, you decide to uh, suicide or uh, decide to kind of take yourself out of the game so you can be redeployed, uh, you'll also, your team will also lose a ticket uh, as well. So there's, there's different variations of how you can kind of uh, lose tickets earlier in the game. Yeah, and uh, pretty much the entire purpose of the game is whoever is the first to lose their tickets, they lose. Yeah, so. whoever zeroed out first. Yeah, pretty much. So with that said, uh, you know, I haven't really seen a, a lot of, uh, you know, action going on here. I've been seeing a bunch of individuals roaming, roaming around and, and trying to make some magic happen. Uh, for the most part, though, it has been quite the even matchup uh, until, uh, I would say, about the midpoint of that game there. And now you can actually see the score flipping. It was uh, or 644 to like 390. And the U.S. certainly not looking very good as the CN forces are doing an astounding job of uh, controlling here. And look at the AC-130's visibility, Corey. Yeah, so that's one of the things that uh, is kind of interesting, too. So we've, we've seen, we've talked about it a lot with the, uh, the skyscraper and its debris. And as you can notice, this is why we uh, kind of go so far into detail about that. As you can see how easy it is uh, to see exactly where these players are. Yep, yep. And, uh, and again, guys, the spectator mode that we're looking at here, the CN player that we're uh, spectating, Bravo so he'll uh, be shooting 13, at blue right now. he'll be shooting at blue, just to clarify on that one. So, yeah, uh, you know, good angles here with that AC-130. Of course, you know, it is a devastating uh, tool if used properly. And I love the fact you can parachute out of it. I think that's uh, really cool as well. Just make sure you don't parachute out uh, while you're outside the, outside the boundaries. Yeah, that won't, that won't be good at all. That would, that would actually suck. Uh, so let's see what's up here. Uh, wow, all of uh, the U.S. squad not able to hold anything down. They are just getting smacked at this point in time. 
Uh, the CN has four territories, uh, B, C, D, and E, although C was being contested briefly, uh, not, not really going to matter all that much. They're going to be losing a lot of tickets here, and it is not going to look good for the U.S. squad. All right, as we continue to see, so right now we've got uh, so most of the action that's happening. It's probably going to happen over there towards D, the D area as uh, they're kind of got a helicopter that's kind of pushing in over there. You've got a couple of scans that are happening for the, uh, from the commander over there for that B flag. And so, yeah, still looks like they're, they've been able to take over D right now. We're probably going to see some conflict happen uh, here shortly in the B flag. And that's why you see uh, the Alpha uh, Alpha 19 uh, who started to make his way over. He's the gunner for this helicopter. Alpha 20 is the pilot. And yeah. uh, looks like uh, right now, as you can see, just from this free cam angle, I'm taking a look right now. Skyscraper. Yeah, you see some debris that's falling at this point. And the visuals are just absolutely shocking. I am. The screen actually blue screens before it goes down. Yeah. And we'll see. Uh, oh, and there it goes. There comes the uh, the skyscraper as it collapses. That means the sea territory is going to be moving a little bit further into the water now uh, because blue of the screen. because of that falling down. <laughs> the blue screen actually is the blue best. screen of death. Yeah, as the, as the skyscraper falls. That's pretty really awesome. That is awesome. I didn't even notice that. It's the little things, man. It's the little things. The elevator music, the blue screen of death, the cat that's on the billboard. <laughs> the cat that's on the billboard over by B. There's a there's a cat that uh, walks across the billboard. Really? Oh, that's pretty awesome. I I, I did not notice that. Yeah, it's over be between B and C uh, by the bridge, but we don't have to go over there to it. Just 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 take my word for it on this one. I I, I will I will take your word for it. For Appreciate it. that. I, I I believe in you. So there's again some little bit more evolution right there. You saw that the uh, the fire hydrant was uh, has been exploded, so that's going to cause some. Uh, uh, it's a visual blockage. Yeah, visual blockage. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going with that. Yeah, and I don't blame you. And then look at this here, Bravo Squad, man. They're going to be pushing up so aggressive uh, on this sea, uh, sea flag. They are going to contend it as well, or contest it, excuse me. And uh, the tank struggling to get over this ridge. <laughs> Not the best idea, but let's uh, zoom our way over to C now as we see all this action going down. Bravo players pushing their way through. A unit working together. It is always an awesome thing to see as they are going to continue to press on forward to C. No one will be there to contest it. There's probably one or two players here on C as a whole, but uh, not enough to cause a problem for this well-positioned unit at this point in time. I thought we were watching a movie trailer for a second on that ta -ta, cinematic ta -ta, ta -ta. value. We were just kind of slowly following the the infantry as they're pushing up. But uh, as right now, uh, we can see they're still, they've spotted, they've kind of finally found this choke point, Ooh. picks it up one, kind of a nice little exchange between the two. It's going to come down to this little quick one versus one here. And going back and forth, his teammates has been able to regroup with them, but they will be able to finish that last player off over there. And so they can probably continue to progress if they'd like to. Uh, let's go ahead and hop in and uh, Ooh, to the tabletop and see exactly where all of these players are at right now. Oh, wait a minute, oh. though. Let's see what happens here real quick. This one alpha player is able to take out one, but I think he is going to uh, get he's picked off. Yep, and C now is going to go to the problem. Is there a gunship right now? Or, the, uh, or is there an uh, amphibious vehicle right now shooting? Uh, in the water right now, there's something that oh, it's a tank across the way. There, it's over there towards that uh, that B flag. Uh, there's a tank uh, that is shooting over there towards the C region. So right there, you see him. Uh, this tank right there is actually the one that's uh, gunning uh, over there towards that point. Wow. Also, there's actually two tanks, uh, one further down the way uh, that is also gunning as well. So they're basically trying to give a lot of. Uh, uh, gunfire there towards that point, trying to pick off numerous players to be able to help out their team. Again, we're on the alpha side right now, so there should be shooting at the orange icons at this point. And uh, so, yeah, you can see how they're all exposed, and they might be able to pick up another one. There goes one down, still spraying away. There goes another. And so they're just kind of picking them apart. Just great idea. Again, whenever that skyscraper falls, it changes the, the, uh, the way that the land is. Yeah and actually push, pushes it further out and making it more and more like a peninsula. Yeah, it changes the dynamic, the evolution, as you said before, Corey, that, uh, you know, that, that dice has uh, been very uh, 
I guess you could say, very creative in implementing the way that, you know, something like a skyscraper it's falling. Not aesthetics, man. It's yeah, it's not aesthetics at all. It, this is stuff that legitimately affects the map, and you're seeing it right before your eyes as this unit of tanks is uh, doing a, a good job of holding out C, but they need infantry to 